Hello, I'm Roy Taylor, Professor of Medicine and Metabolism at the University of Newcastle, UK. I'm also Honorary Consultant Physician in the Newcastle Hospital NHS Trust. And that's important because I can link my clinical work with my academic work. So I'd like to talk to the title Reversing Type 2 Diabetes in the Real World because this is a practical topic. It has been a research topic and over the last 15 years or so I've demonstrated that type 2 diabetes is actually caused by excess fat in the liver and in the pancreas. In the liver it causes insulin resistance, in the pancreas it prevents the acute insulin secretion we all rely on after meals. So now that we have this very clear grasp that we're dealing with a simple disease, it's a homogenous disease, obviously in a heterogeneous population, but the disease itself is homogenous. Too much fat. Now, what does that mean, too much fat? Does it mean obesity? Well, most certainly not. Obesity is defined as a fixed level of body mass index, whereas what we're talking about is a person going over the amount of fat that they personally can tolerate in the body. Some thin people, if they put on even a few pounds, can go over that fat threshold. They can't store the fat in the safe depots underneath the skin, and it has to be stored inside the internal organs. So that means the fat will build up in excess in liver and pancreas, irrespective of body mass index. So there is a bottom line that's very important. If a person has type 2 diabetes, then they are too heavy for their own body. It's not a matter of being obese. That is not relevant. And by the time of diagnosis, on average, people are about 15 kilograms too heavy for their own body. Our work has defined this, and it makes it easy to see a rational way forward. We need to achieve this degree of weight loss with the cooperation of our patients in the real world. Now, in order to do the studies which has allowed us to observe diabetes in reversal and to be able to define what's going on, we had to invent a way of getting all comers to lose 15 kilograms. That sounds a tall order. But in fact, it's much easier than you might imagine. We need to take away the two problems that are most difficult of dieting, hunger and the day-to-day -day cumulative burden of decisions about what to eat, how much to eat. We can do that quite simply by using a packet formula diet. Packets made up either in semi-skim milk or water, depending on the nature, one packet per meal no decisions, and people feel much better. In addition, we advise the use of non-starchy vegetables. We have to keep the bowels happy, as life isn't about metabolism alone. There's a whole person to think about. This approach leaves our people feeling really quite happy and auto-motivated. What do I mean by that? Well, after one week, People lose an average of three and a half kilograms. They find they can jump out of a chair, they can run upstairs. And this underlies what they feed back to me. I feel 10 years younger. The fact that they feel so good, they have improved energy levels, not less energy, on this low calorie diet, allows them to continue it and achieve the sort of weight loss that is needed. But it can't be just assumed that this is something a doctor can do to a patient. The individual has got to want it. They have got to be motivated. Now, information can be provided which will be motivating. A person at diagnosis, for instance, has got a 9 out of 10 chance of getting rid of their type 2 diabetes if they lose 15 kilograms, or sometimes 15% of body weight for people in the lighter weight range. That in itself is motivating. Also, the matter of moving away from the risk of blindness, the risk of amputation, the risk of renal failure. These are things that doctors can mention, 
but my patients tell me the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is like a hammer blow to their self-esteem and their health. So this is a time when people are likely to be able to take action, definitive action. Once the explanation is done, the second step is that they must go away and discuss it with their spouse, their partner, their friends, their family, because they will need support from all those people in order to get through sometimes tough times during the period of weight loss. There's a third thing, and that is exercise. Please don't do it. That might seem strange, but it's a fact missed by doctors and even by obesity experts that if we advise overweight people who are no longer young to start an exercise program, they will indulge in compensatory eating, partly subconscious, partly conscious. Because of that, exercise must not be started at the beginning of the weight loss period. People should just continue whatever physical activity they usually do. However, at the end of that period, with the very careful transition to normal eating, then that's when increased physical activity comes on. Because physical activity is very good for preventing weight gain associated with moderate continuing control of the amount that's eaten. The nature of the diet doesn't matter at all. It's that which suits the person. The important thing is they know they must weigh themselves regularly and that weight must stay down. If it doesn't, and this is a real world, people run into real problems. The roof starts leaking. Financial problems, family illness, you know all of this. But of course it puts people off. The matter of keeping their weight down, they forget, they go back to automatic eating, and weight tends to rise. Not a problem. We can plan for this in advance. If weight rises too much, we need to have rescue pa packages available whereby people can use, say, one packet of the liquid formula diet instead of the main meal for a couple of weeks. That will bring moderate weight loss down. If the weight loss has been great, then we can go back and use the total diet replacement again with three liquid formulas a day. It's all possible. It has to be planned in, and of course, it has to be culturally acceptable to the people. So I know what works in Newcastle. It's over to doctors, wherever they work, to discover what can be used locally. This has been tried in Maharashtra State, India. It works very well. We ran a project in Barbados with an Afro-Caribbean population. It works just the same. There is no ethnic magic to this process. So we can say type 2 diabetes is not this terribly depressive, relentless, lifelong, worsening disease that we have believed with need for increasing tablets, eventually insulin, and you as a doctor are merely supervising the decline and demise of your patient. We can now set that aside. It's possible to return people to real health. The drugs are stopped on day one of the diet if they're on drugs. Stopping insulin can be done. That requires more attention. There is more information about this on a website that we put up at the University of Newcastle. That's go.ncl.ac.uk forward slash diabetes hyphen reversal. That information will explain the details of managing insulin to get people with true type 2 diabetes off their insulin and towards normal health. We can never guarantee complete reversal back to non-diabetic levels, but it's certainly the case that the diabetes will be much better controlled on less medication. And finally, there is a book that has been written by myself specifically for people with diabetes and their families. But also, it contains information that all doctors should know. I hope it's readable. It explains everything I've just been talking about. And it's called Life Without Diabetes, easily available on Amazon. So this is something which can be explained. 
it can be made culturally relevant, and it can revolutionize the lives of your patients. Thank you.